is good, guys? It's your boy, Corey. It's your boy, John. And welcome back to The Artist You Drop, where we feature stories from today's rising artists. Yes, sir. If you like being inspired, don't miss out on our weekly episodes, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified when we drop new episodes. Let's go. Guys, our guest today is a visionary film director with a decade of experience and is renowned for collaborations with top artists, brands, and athletes. His work has garnered over 3 billion views, showcasing his creative excellence and innovative storytelling. Guys, please welcome George Orozco. Let's go. Hey. Come on, come Appreciate on. you, George, for coming Appreciate through. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. We uh, you know, definitely had to get you on here. I've followed your work for uh, a minute, too. I found you. Po- you popped up on YouTube uh, yeah. a while ago, and you know, ever since then, I've definitely you know checked out your work. So I appreciate you coming through. Yeah, oh, yeah. I appreciate you guys inviting me to the podcast. Yeah, so, you know, of course, yeah. of course. I'm excited. Hey, thank yes. you. Well, before we get into Georgia's story, we got to get into the drink of the day. All right. So the drink of the day is a sh- dirty Shirley Temple. Uh, this is an artist you drop special as well because it's not your average dirty. Sh- Shirley. So, Dirty Shirley is usually made with vodka, but mm-hmm. I made it with tequila. Yeah. And I also put some lime juice in there. for, And then uh, my boys on the keto diet, so we yeah. kept it low calorie, no carbs. It's a lifestyle. You know, <laughs> you know, I appreciate, you know, anyone who's working towards their fitness. So, yeah, got the Dirty Shirley with um, uh, diet uh, uh, ginger ale and then topped it off with some uh, grenadine. And then mix it all up and then garnished it with a little mint. And uh, that is your Dirty Shirley, the, okay. the artist you drop special. You know what? I Before, yeah. the one the one Shirley Temple you made when yeah. we had Andre O'Hurd on here. Oh, yeah. Fucking fire. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. my God. Even Andre O'Hurd, the guy who's been at many celebrity parties, bars, he yes. said my uh dirty shirley was the best he's ever yeah, had it was fire it's crazy it was it's crazy, crazy. Right. so this we is we gotta have that again yeah, i know uh, well this is a low calorie version yep. yes sir so, yes sir to a good see. podcast it smells amazing so oh mm. mm. that's pretty good i yeah. think it's good very tangy yeah tangy well yeah. it's with tequila and a little bit of lime okay yeah uh, normally uh dirty shirley doesn't have a uh, lime at all yeah, 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 or yeah. tequila it's yeah. vodka oh really yeah yeah, yeah so it's uh, a little bit different hey yeah. shout mm-hmm. out to the bartender <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah that <laughs> shit's go. good though that shit's good all right guys we're gonna dive right into it so you know i gotta ask a, a generic question yeah uh or you know but obviously you're a talented director followed your work yes, and you got that heat you know what got you into wanting to do film more specifically music videos Honestly, it was just being at the right place and having the right stuff at the time. I was I went mm. to um, film school mm. in okay. Santa Monica. And that's what made me come out to Los Angeles. Oh, okay. I'm originally from a really, really small town out like in the Fresno area called Lindsay, California. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm from Fresno too. Really? Yeah. yeah like oh, okay. Clovis, Shaw area, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm yeah. like, I'm like by Visalia. Oh, okay, so, yeah, Visalia, So, yeah. so um, really small town and then yeah. I ended up coming to film school in LA. Okay. Um, and in the beginning, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to pursue video and just photo the aspect of that yeah, area, yeah. that whole area yeah and um i was working at a best buy at the time oh, and okay. so i had like a, a, a best buy discount nice. like that yeah. so we got our first um it was our first what is it the financial aid check oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah. and you know when you get that yeah. you've never <laughs> i know how that is I, you've never bulk, seen money yeah, yeah, yeah you saw it in bulk and you're yeah. like 18 17 years uh, old yeah. and you really don't know how to act. And I saw all my friends are like, yo, we're going to hit the mall. We're mm-hmm. going to do this. Yeah, and that. Right, right. But like, I was like in a search of like finding a camera at the time. Mm. And I was working in the camera department. Oh, okay. Nice. So the first thing I did, I was like, yo, I had like four or $5,000 in uh-huh. like, you know, aid money. I didn't yeah. know what it was for. I was right, like, right. they just gave it to me. I was very, you know, naive thinking, right, oh, right. I could use this for whatever. Facts. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get this next year. The same thing. <laughs> right, right. So that's what I thought. Okay. Um, okay. I ended up just buying a digital camera. And the yeah. time when I came in to film and I started figuring things out, we were in the middle of the 5D being the oh, okay. industry yeah, standard yeah, of, right. of digital filmmaking. Mm-hmm. It went from analog, not analog, but like the, the DV tape. Yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. It went over to the actual 5Ds and yeah, like right, having right. the HD. Yeah. Uh, like digital. digital yeah, yeah, digital. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I just picked up, I ended up buying a camera. It ended up being my first digital camera. And I was kind of ahead of everybody at that point to yeah. have your own equipment. Right, mm-hmm. right. I always believed having your own equipment can edge you off to everybody else. Facts. All right. So it was the most random thing. Someone just asked me, hey, and they didn't, everybody found out that I had a camera. Mm-hmm. I was like the only one that actually spent money on yeah. something that what they were going to use for. Exactly. 
and uh, a buddy of mine was like, yo, I have these artists that want a music video. Can you come out and shoot a music video? And at the time, I was like, yeah, sure. I don't know what I'm, I didn't say I don't know what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But I guess the process of doing it, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the idea of creating something mm-hmm. for another piece of art mm-hmm. that okay. contribute to it. So then... I didn't know how to shoot music videos, and if nobody knows that how music videos are shot, you normally shoot the song, you play the song out the whole time, the right, whole three right. minutes, two minutes, and then you just shoot it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back then, yeah. I was shooting two seconds, three oh. seconds, four seconds, and yeah. then 10 seconds, and like <laughs> I had these like 300 clips, and I had to figure out where to place them, yeah, and yeah, okay. it was like that learning process yeah, of it yeah. all, but then I figured it out, but it just, I guess the process of just falling in love with creating a video yeah, yeah. and then seeing like the reaction like yo this is super dope like mm-hmm. at the time nobody can really shoot you know great and like the right, most right. hardest part for a lot of these videographers or directors was syncing up footage right right you know and i i got the hang of how to do that mm-hmm. and like i knew how to connect things up but yeah. just falling in love with the process of that stuff and uh the first music video that i did was just so like no, non-planned and just I loved yeah. the idea and yeah. I just started reaching out to like artists that oh, okay. like were coming up and stuff like that so like in the beginning of like 2010 mm-hmm. 11 and like a little bit of 12 I was reaching out to artists to like shoot free music videos I was right, begging right. them to let me shoot their music videos yeah right right that's how I started with music videos and stuff Fire. like that yeah. yeah yeah that's almost like my story too right. you know I I started actually with a Canon T2i mm-hmm. so uh, I went from um, what was it it was only shooting 720. I f- oh, fuck, I forget what camera it was. But and then when the uh, T2i came mm-hmm. out, um, I was like, oh shit, like, you know, this, yeah. ca- this camera looks fire, you know? So I ended up buying that. I started just doing like um, uh, short films of myself. Like I was, try- I was trying to watch tutorials on After Effects yeah. and learn how to clone myself and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, you cool. know? But and then I also had like friends that were, um, they weren't, like rappers, they they tried to rap. They mm. weren't like legit or anything, yeah. but they were like, "Hey, let's shoot a music video." But just yeah. skits too. Yeah, 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 and skit. I was shooting mm. skits and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, my uh, some of my friends that were trying to get into music and stuff, you know, they were like, "Oh, let's shoot a music video." I had no idea what I was doing either, uh, and you know, you just kind of go out and shoot and go with it, you know. And that's all. It's it's the same way with, uh, yeah. with me, you know. I just fall in love with doing that. In in general, like. I've always loved music. I was actually producing music before mm, I got into like that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, before before I actually get into videography and all mm-hmm. that. So I wanted to find a way to like um, incorporate my love for music into video because yeah. you know honestly yeah. I thought I was gonna do music full time. I thought mm-hmm. it was gonna be a musician, but I had no like music history. Like I I was never taught or anything it's like, like self-taught. That. Type yeah, of yeah, stuff. I was yeah. never self-taught or anything. You know, so. Video was just definitely one of those things where, you know, you can Mm self-teach because I think we started almost the same time. I I picked up the camera around 2010, 2011, Mm -hmm. and um, I really had no idea what to do. There was, on YouTube, there wasn't much tutorials, nothing. Right, right, exactly. It's crazy because if you look at, like, like video, like, careers, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you start now, you are accessible to so many more tools. Yeah. So many more people selling these products that Mm -hmm. help you to to create or to get clients. Back then, there was, everybody was a gatekeeping. Yep. Everybody was like, Oh, we shoot with the red and this yeah. and that. And right, like, right. you try to look up certain how to shoot a music video yeah. or how to do this and that. And nobody was monetizing this stuff or figuring right, out right, how right. to do this stuff exactly. and get make money off of it. Mm-hmm. So they were like, no, I'm not going to give out this free information. Exactly. We're in a whole different world now. Like, yeah. all this stuff is achievable. But back then, it mm-hmm. was, you know, five times harder just yeah. because of people. You know, it wasn't accessible to everybody. Yeah, yeah, there facts. was no master classes. There mm-hmm. was no workshops. There right, was no right. stuff like that to help the younger, the younger generation. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right. and I remember when I was starting, I was like seeking and asking for guidance and stuff yeah. like that. And for the longest, how you were saying, like I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to be a director, mm-hmm. right? And right. like part of it was like. I didn't know what a director was mm-hmm. and, and I, I for the law and that was like the longest I felt like when I was getting these jobs I was getting this imposter syndrome and like mm-hmm. I didn't know if I belonged here but I figured out like hey I'm still creating these cool things yeah. right. and I'm following through with all the ideas that I'm putting out together right and you know it didn't really hit me till like I fell into someone else's set that I looked up to my yeah. friend just invited me out and I was looking up to uh uh, another director and I remember just being on his set and just mm-hmm. watching him do what he was doing and you don't get me wrong there's 
a lot of different directing styles. Yeah, right, There's right, a lot of sure. vocal people. Yeah. Some people yeah. just don't talk. They talk to the AD or whatever. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But it definitely, I'm a very vocal person. I'm, my presence is on is on set. Yeah, like, right, I know right. how to kind of, like, steer the ship. I mm. like to pull the ropes. I know mm. I like to be able to steer the whole thing myself because mm-hmm. I know that I've gained the skill to do everything from lighting and yeah. everything else. So I got to ask these questions. Yeah, right. But seeing the director that I looked up to and seeing that I'm doing the same thing he's doing, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. maybe just a little bit more because I was the vocal, it right, gave right. me the confidence to be like, okay, I keep going with this. Right, right, right. Like I'm doing, I, for some reason I fell into the same playbook and find mm. out that I'm doing the same plays yeah. and, and I'm in the same league with, with the people that I'm, I'm looking up to. Right, and it right. was, it was weird because like it takes you seeing someone else do the same thing you're doing oh, yeah. to give you that confidence. Like, right. damn, I'm doing the same thing. Excellent. Right. right. So like job shadowing. You know, yeah, yeah. Job shadow. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, and back then it was hard to get on set. It was so right. hard to get on set. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little easier because you can go do it and be like, yo, I yeah. want to, I'll do it for free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're not going to say no to it. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, just job shadowing something that I've always wanted to do and seeing mm. someone else do what I'm doing and like me not knowing what a director was and then seeing a director do what I was doing yeah. mm-hmm. gave me so much confidence. And mm-hmm. that was the craziest part. Like the, the it was like an epiphany. Like, yeah, oh, right. wow. I know how to do this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. you know I you know going back on because I was literally going to mention this too. I've hit up multiple multiple people during that time, like 2000, 2011, yeah. uh, you know, asking people like, oh, how do you do this? How do... They just never respond. Yeah. They mm. always wanted to gatekeep that yeah. shit. And, you know, it's like it. that's when you kind of got to learn on your own mm-hmm. and you figure things out on your own. But I want to say maybe around 2015, 16, that's when more tutorials started popping yeah, up. Right. And, you know, it would help and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that was, it was definitely a hard time, you know, yeah. just trying to figure shit out on your own, not really know how to work a camera yeah. and yeah. all this, yeah. um, crazy times. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, crazy. And, and, and to, to add to that, right. These tutorials that are coming out and all mm-hmm. these people that are, are selling products, mm-hmm. I always tell people at the end of the day, you're going to pick up whatever they're giving you, but only what works for you. Because some some videographers or directors are completely different from what your style is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll pick up one or two things, but don't expect to take the blueprint and make it work for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's different. And I've seen Mm -hmm. a lot of people that just like copy and paste what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, You got to remember, being a creative, you have to kind of set yourself away from everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, if that means that you don't pump out a lot of work or that you don't like, you create things that mean Mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then, we live in a world where like everybody's dropping stuff left and right and right, it's super right. cool i think yeah. that's really dope and it looks like you know everybody's powerhousing everything and that's really right. cool but i like watching certain people drop things when there's meaningful stuff behind it so right, always right. remember to keep yourself inside of when people are teaching you stuff mm-hmm. to always keep like the root of what you started with yeah. Yeah. because that's what's going to make you different you know right, my, right. my little my my little brother is also in the film industry mm-hmm. nice. okay, and i love his his style mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know he's learning and he's asking me questions but he's taking what he is going to work for him and not yeah. what's going to change him for sure right, right, you right. know right. so i always tell people like if you guys are you know, seeking advice, take that advice, but also keep yourself inside of that advice and don't yeah. change your whole formula. Cause right, right. then it's like, okay, well now you're just another mimic copy. Yeah, copy and yeah. paste. Yeah. And, that's, uh, and it's crazy because this uh, industry and this generation, yeah. we live in TikTok where they're, everyone's following trends, yeah. everyone's copy and pasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's hard to find originality, but it's also hard to be original because there's it's so saturated Mm -hmm. everyone has already done everything so it also is but one thing that i want to emphasize of what you said is like being yourself and taking what you learn and creating and you know adding your own twist to what you already learned because that's one thing that i did with uh corey you know me and him met back in like uh, 2013 yeah Yeah. 14 and uh, i started out dancing Mm -hmm. and i wasn't into film at all but then when we met you know he really taught me the ropes so yeah. I, I learned like a lot of things from him. But at the end of the day, you know, we, you had to take it on your own and, you know, create your own original of course. flip to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, and that's what I say, the whole like creating styles and creating right. not just like a video. You're creating a style of what you do. Mm-hmm. Clients will look for that. Yeah. yeah. Right, you know what exactly. I'm saying? They look for your style. They're looking like, yo, this guy can do this. For you sure. know. And that it is a bonus. Yeah. If you can create a certain look mm-hmm. and a certain feel to your videos mm-hmm. and they like you know clients will align or for products sure. will align to what you're doing as right, well right. you know yeah. and that's what's crazy about it yeah yeah you know so. for us like that's one thing that kind of sucked for us is living in seattle we lived in a city where really nobody is was doing this shit. Yeah. you know so during the time i started getting into like filmmaking um 
I wasn't able to, you know, hop on anybody's set, mm-hmm. check out how they do stuff. Literally, it was just me doing my thing and, you know, just experimenting. Yeah. I wish, you know, obviously down here in L.A., there's so many people that are in the filmmaking business and you're able to kind of hop on a set, shadow people and stuff like that. That's one thing that kind of sucked, I guess, for me is like there was just nobody to shadow. I yeah, just kind of right, had right, to go on, right. on, you know, learn shit myself. But that's when, you know, eventually I decided to go to film school. Yeah. You know, and kind of learn things from there. And that's kind of going into my next uh, thing was, you know, I always ask whenever we have like a videographer or director on here, mm-hmm. um, you know, film school. Film school, it's a big topic. Yeah. You know, um, I went to, I graduated from LA Film. Had, I had a great experience. Um, and I know you, of course, you already talked about going to uh, film school as well. But do you think it was worth going to film school? And, you know, right now, for me, I'm in fucking huge ass debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> huge ass mm. debt. So was it worth the debt? Okay. What, what do you think? So, and I'm only speaking for myself. Yeah, right, for sure. Right, because right. The, everybody the, the has outcome, an opinion. Yeah, so yeah, the outcome right, right. is different for everybody mm-hmm. else. Right. And that turnaround rate or that, that rate of being successful in the... Right, right where you're at right Right. is is very low Mm -hmm. and i believe that for me i think film school was beneficial for Mm -hmm. me not what i learned none of it it was because i learned something from school because Mm -hmm. i was very uh, you know against the grain when they would ask me to do stuff i would turn in my own work Mm -hmm. instead of whatever they're asking me to do and they're gonna throw it in the in the trash can bin after Mm -hmm. um i believe that for me my essential like big piece that I got out of it was the connections that I got from film school. Yeah. Because at the time that I was at film school, things were popping up on Instagram and, and YouTube to how to learn these things. Mm. And the school, just like any other school, like they're so behind in how to teach you how to film or how to mm. do math or how to do history or whatever it is. Like right, right. our teachings are behind. They gotta, mm. you know, they gotta approve these curriculums mm-hmm. years ahead. Right. Right. So we were we were doing the D V tape my first year mm. and I was like, <laughs> Well you were working on digital now. Yeah. Right, right. So they were a whole year behind and I was already trying to figure out the new stuff. Right, right. The computers weren't fast enough for me to use the digital stuff right, yet. Right, right. You know, the 1080p, and that was like big, right. and the 4K yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. But I think for me, when I went to film school, it definitely was beneficial for me when it mm-hmm. came down to gaining my connections. There's certain mm-hmm. people that I work with, like Justin Jones. He's really big in the film right, industry. Right, right. Yeah. Me and him, like, were essential to each other's careers. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. He was essential to me for the, the DPing and, and, and mm-hmm. shooting my videos, and I was yeah. essential to him to directing his bigger videos in the beginning of his career, and we mm-hmm. both okay. built from it. And you know, we did a lot of things, you know, film students would do, but yeah. we also brought in a lot of professionalism behind it. Mm-hmm. We okay. were doing professional stuff on campus yeah. and bringing okay. in clients that actually meant something. So like when we would see these students go out and do film sets and mm-hmm. we work on each other's film sets, there was nothing coming out of them because they would graduate and they were still have to find a job. Mm-hmm. Right, when right. I graduated, I came out with clients. Mm-hmm. Right, there was right. a big difference. I was working in film school to get my clients when I got out. Right, so right. I don't have to worry about finding a job. Yeah. Right, right. I was employing myself mm-hmm. with the clients that I had. Yeah. 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 And right. it was tough. It, everything's tough. I mean any anybody that's doing opportunity on t- when anybody's entrepreneurship yeah. 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 it's hard. It's not mm. an easy like there's no ropes for it. There's this everything's Facts. different. Everybody works different. Yeah. And I just figured it out. I was like, "Hey, yeah. I got to find the certain clients and keep pushing and every day we have to reach out, find right. my leads and stuff like that." But mm-hmm. film school was definitely for yeah. me it was worth it. Now, if I, I told my nephew too, he wanted to go to my, my brother, he was like, he wanted to go to film school. And I told him like, bro, I already did the film school. Yeah. You don't have to be part of that anymore. Yeah, like exactly. yeah, th- those connections you need, I'll have them for you. Right, right. You don't need to be in debt for them as well. Exactly. You know? So no. like, if I tell someone like, go to film school, if you have no connect, sorry, yeah, go, yeah, to, yeah. go to film school, if you have no connections, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, if facts. you can't sit, like literally find mm-hmm. no connections, how you were saying, yeah. Yeah. I can't get in. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to join it. Yeah. Right. Right. If you go to film school. If that is the case, but yeah. if you can socialize and, and, and mingle with other people and yeah. come out and, and do free work for a first year, but yeah. actually be on your shit yeah. and know what you're, and, and just gain experience and not ask and not complain. You're, you'll get in. Right, but right, right. if you don't want to do that hard route, then go yeah. pay the money to go to film school. But Facts. it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You know, all these things that they're teaching you at film school, they're mm. teaching you on YouTube U- University. Exactly. There you go. That's yeah. where I'm at too yeah. right now. Yeah. No, I mean, that mm-hmm. that's literally like 100% what you said. Facts. Like, 
when I, when I said, you know, I, there wasn't like nobody for me to, you know, go to sets or whatever. Yeah. I was so, what happened to me is I was going to um, the Art Institute of Seattle for mm. like two years. When I came out here for vacation one time, I heard about the LA film. Mm. And, you know, once I eventually swapped over, I met tons of people, like tons of people that were really into film. The people at Art Institute were just not about it. So I had seen, you know, after um, I left Art Institute, and uh you know came down to la film and all that i went back home these people were literally not even pursuing yeah. the film industry anymore it's it like yeah it was just you know those people kind of just found something they wanted to try and see if it yeah. works but they were just not passionate but about you, it you see mm-hmm. it though right. i think i think when people really like are about this mm-hmm. and about the like creating yeah mm-hmm. You see it in their Back, eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see it at yeah. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning, right, right, 16 right. hour sets. Yeah. And these son of a bitches are <laughs> busting ass and yeah, working yeah. hard yeah. And, and and there's no end button. They don't know that they don't know where that tunnel is yeah. at. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You see it because you saw it in yourself at some point. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Where you're like, I don't care how long it takes as long mm-hmm. as it gets done. Mm-hmm. You know, that mindset is so huge in the films in the film industry. Right, right, yeah. And I know people like that are in the big sets like, oh we don't you gotta get paid. I'm like, yeah, but you gotta get to a point where you can show people that you're about mm-hmm. it because sure. it, it really it, it flushes out who's not really gonna right, be here right, for the right. long run. Yeah, yeah, they're just yeah, here yeah. cause you know, yeah. daddy gave them a little bit of money yeah. Exactly. Yeah. and they wanna go try something out. Yeah, that's facts. You see it though. Mm-hmm. You yeah, see yeah. it when they start complaining about meals and yeah. right. you know, stuff like that. I'm like, I, when I work with people that I work with, like they know like, yo, we'll take care of you like right, at some right, point. Sure. But yeah. that's just part of like film life. It's not all glamorous, it's not all right, pretty, right. especially sure. when you're on a lower budget. Yeah, right, right. You have to just stick it out. Right. If not, people are gonna be like, Yeah, he kinda complains too much or uh yeah. he asks about food, like we'll get fed, like you know right, what I'm right. saying? Like you're gonna get that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's and you know, at the end of the day, like yeah, you're you are we are hungry, yeah. but like how hungry are you sure. with right, film? Right. You Facts. know, there's a whole yeah. different, you know, ball game. Facts. Um, but you know, that's just part of like, yeah. I mean, that's seeing, what, that's, who, yeah, seeing that's who, what any art, like, yeah, that separates like the good from the greats. Mm-hmm. There's like the literally like starving yeah. artists that paint all day and don't eat, but right. they create like ten pieces in a day, Facts. and they don't even think about themselves, right, right, right. because they create. They're so like fascinated on creating art, yeah, right. and that's all they're like you know they're going for mm-hmm. right exactly and they don't even realize it they are so consumed into their art yeah mm-hmm. that's how sometimes when i get on set i'm like wow it's been six hours and i'm like holy like it flies yeah. so fast because mm-hmm. i go into a zone and i'm closed off right right exactly and like there's only a person that i you know an ad that reminds me like yo you gotta <laughs> eat and i'm yeah. like oh yeah, what? yeah let's make it happen it's yeah. 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 Facts. but that's so. how you know you're passionate about yeah. what you do as exactly. well you know there's no clock out time yeah you yeah. know so you're just in it yeah. um you know the last time we had a video director was Matt Alonzo, you know, yeah. on Maddie, the podcast. Yeah. 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 Matt, so, Matt, hey, Matt, I think you met. Shout out Matt Alonzo. Hey. Yeah, Matt is dope. Matt so is you, dope. have you guys worked together? I know you mentioned No, you but guys... the guy that I looked up to and I went on that the set was, we was Matt about, Alonzo. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I was okay. going to say it, but I was going to say at some point, but yeah, he was, but he's Latino. Okay. And What's his name? Matt Alonzo. Oh, okay. No, no Matt Alonzo. No, no, no yeah, guy, Matt, the yeah. guy who knows Matt Alonzo. No, uh, I don't remember his name. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah they okay. got me on set. I don't remember yeah, his name. So that's so that's how it happened. Is the yeah. guy got you on set? You met Matt Alonzo. Yeah, and then yeah. yeah. We knew there. each other through oh, okay. social media for a while, and like, I, I would always send Matt like videos, and he was like, "Yo, that's dope." Did you send him your work and stuff? Yeah, yeah. he'd okay. always like once in a while respond. Mm-hmm. You know, at the you know at the time I was nobody, and yeah. nobody was like paying attention to me, and mm-hmm. I was trying to figure <laughs> things out. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame anybody, but yeah. I was like, I'm, there's sometimes where I can't respond to everybody, or they send me videos or whatever. Um. But yeah, I would always send him my videos and he would be like, yo, that's dope. And like, I got to a point where like my quality was going up and mm-hmm. he right. would notice it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up following up on his set and he was like, yo, what up, bro? And like, yeah. I was, you know, I said, what's up to him? And I just saw him work and I saw him, him I saw myself in his position. I was like, mm-hmm. yo, this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. So right, it made right. me like it, his set when I was on set, when I saw him do uh-huh. that and what he was doing and like, you know. I was doing the same thing, just being a little bit more vocal, just because yeah. you know he had a he had a whole set, and oh, I didn't yeah, know about ads, yeah, yeah, and I didn't know yeah, about yeah, all that other sure. stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it definitely like it, like his being on his own set like boosted mm-hmm. my confidence, you know, yeah. and seeing him and being Latino and, yeah. and and just seeing another mm-hmm. Latino doing that. And at the time, this was back in 2011 and, and 12, mm-hmm. he was doing like the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's all what we're talking about. Heavy hitters, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that, I think he like, did Far East Movement yeah, and all yeah. that yeah. show yeah. stuff. And, and, and as a Hispanic scene, another Hispanic do something like that, 
you know, it definitely like gave me so much pride. I'm like, yo, if he can do it, I could do it in my way. Mm -hmm. I never was like, yo, I'm going to do what Matt Lonzo was doing. I was like, I'm going to figure out what I could do in my way, you know? So that was, big shout out to Matt. I mean, honestly, that dude is, that, that dude is super responsive. He will, he will message you back. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 Bro, he gets mad at me all the time because I always, I always, I always talk shit to his Raiders. <laughs> oh, really? Raiders? All, all yeah. The time. Oh, yeah. Hey, Maddie, I love you, bro. <laughs> I know how it feels to be a Raider fan. I, I mean, they, they ain't yeah. doing too well I know. Right now, so. Hey, but go Hawks. <laughs> hey, go Hawks. <laughs> shout out to Matt. Yeah, shout out to Matt. Hey, shout out yeah. to Matt. Yeah, for sure. I Like I said, I, I appreciate Matt because he, he definitely is just super responsive and yeah. so you know, humble. Yeah, he's yeah. super yeah. humble. Yeah. So I, I would definitely suggest, you know, if you're an upcoming director or videographer, you know, reach out to the guy because he yeah. will he, he's there to help yeah, yeah he, he's sure. super dope he definitely yeah. gives back for sure. there's yeah. a few directors that at the time when i was growing uh growing in the in film industry that mm-hmm. i looked up matt lonzo was for sure the first one that i yeah. was like wow mm-hmm. you know he's in my lane he's sure. close to what i am yeah matt lonzo alex nazari mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. colin tilly yeah they were they were, really they, were they were at the time like the top heads of 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 Video directing, yeah, yeah. Right. for sure. Just watching their stuff definitely inspired me to just get better. Yeah, right. Like get better. Yeah, mm. I remember just being drunk sometimes and watching <laughs> yeah. their music videos. Like, yeah. damn, I've I been there too. One day, good. yeah, I've been there. And yeah. I've been like, and I just remember just wanting it so much. And you know yeah. when you're drunk, like, yeah, yeah, you, you sure. know how much you want it because yeah. you get emotional. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just watching these videos and being fucking inspired, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, everybody's sure. videos, just seeing everybody just like pop off everywhere yeah, and I'm like yo yeah. this is dope yeah, and like just yeah. seeing that stuff was really yeah. cool man now I've That's been dope. there too like literally I've had days where you know like I'm not doing shit the next day yeah. so literally just drink watch music videos mm-hmm. the whole time and like I'm like damn this shit is fucking inspiring you know like right. I'll even just you know sometimes I'll just grab screenshots too of like while I'm while I'm fucking drunk and be yeah. like, damn this you know I could use this shot for this. It's or a whole I, different perspective. It, when yeah, it is. Yeah. No, <laughs> it is. It is. It, it's start crazy. coming up with ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm record myself real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, one thing that Matt mentioned was like how shooting video music videos is not like sustainable, even like at a big budget level, like 30 yeah. to 50 K, you know, at the end of the day, you only get like a small percentage out of after all the expenses, yeah. you know, now that you've done so many sh- shoots um, in the industry, do you think that's true as well? Yes. Cause I'm in a whole other industry now and the money there is like, I was at a lake uh-huh. Now I'm at an ocean. Yeah. It's completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's true. Like music videos are really dope. They're really cool. They they glamorize like the creators and who's in front of the in front of the edits or in front of the 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 creative direction of them. Right. Mm. It's really cool. Like I consider music videos like the playground, mm. right? But. I've jumped into the like sports industry and working mm-hmm. with like nice. sports agents and working with with agencies like they have money yeah. compared and they are asking for minimal stuff. Mm-hmm. They just want certain things to be you know illustrated in the video, and they'll throw you know twenty five thirty five k mm-hmm. for yeah. a 15, 14 second video. Yeah. You got to remember you're only editing fourteen fifteen seconds. Yeah. Right, right, right. Compared to a music video yeah. where right. a label will hassle you for ten to five grand, yeah. right, and right. they're still skeptical of even giving you that money. Right, right, right. right. And you have mm-hmm. to edit three minute videos. Yeah. Right, exactly. With revisions. Yeah. Right. And they don't like certain things. Yeah. It's very tough, man. Very time consuming. And I've I've done it mm-hmm. and I've and I've seen it and I've definitely realized that it is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yeah. It's yeah. it's really hard unless you are like Cole Bennett, mm-hmm. where you right, have right. something that is like funneling back the money away yeah. from just the music video itself. Mm-hmm. It's very hard unless you have that platform, sure. you know, and Cole okay. Bennett figured it out and yeah. he figured out how to make it happen where right, it, right. it sustained him, but it also created a label. And now yeah. it's more of a distribution plant where sure. now right, right, right. it's like, when it's you come here that, for, yeah. it's way bigger than that. Mm-hmm. You're now breaking artists. That's a whole right. different story. Yeah, Labels exactly. are looking at you and they're going to throw money at you. And yeah. that's just the, the right, and you get a percentage off of it. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I know, I know music videos, unless you're in that lane or mm-hmm. unless you're like, uh, Edgar that has like mm-hmm. Blank Square Productions that yeah. has like mm-hmm. he he's kind of stepped away from being like the director or the head of it mm-hmm. where he has a bunch of directors where he can be EP all this stuff right. and kind of work everywhere yeah. and right. not be singled out and be like yo well you're only a director we only mm-hmm. need you for a certain amount of things yeah. I've learned that being able to be more than just a director yeah 
will sustain you in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's seasons in music video. Yeah. Right, right. right. There's seasons in December, November, up to mm-hmm. January, like labels are closed. Yeah. Right, right. And That's true. if you're unless you have no independent artists, it's very hard for you to get some some work from labels or Facts. certain work, stuff like that. So yeah. That's no cool. agreed. I mean, I, I think you know, just yeah, music videos in general, it, it's a hard thing, especially, you know, when like like us, you know, we're very small and, you know, when we do work with artists, it's more, you know, just artists that aren't signed to labels yeah. or anything. And that ain't going to support like my fucking, you yeah, know, you know it's not going to support me, yeah. you know. So obviously we got the full time jobs and stuff like that. You know, uh, for me, being the videographer, photographer for e-commerce, I mean, that shit is fucking Cake. Yeah, it's cake. You know, yeah. it's mm. it's a full time gig, but you know when I have uh, the time, you know, do the shit and work and shoot music videos. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, I, you know, I on it. Matt changed my perspective because yeah. I always thought, you know, like I wanted to do music videos full time, but yeah. and then you know after he was like, no, that sh- that shit's not really gonna take you. That ain't it. Mm-hmm. It ain't yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, it ain't it. And it's shifted. It's yeah. shifted yeah, from yeah, it's like true. these fifty, yeah, yeah. hundred thousand dollar videos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two, five, ten. Even yeah. then, even mm-hmm. they're like, ah, oh, well, we don't even know if it's gonna do good. X, you right. know, here's a thousand. I've mm-hmm. seen, you know, stuff like that happen. And yeah, I don't blame the labels. Yeah, yeah right, right. that's a lot of money. And then especially if it doesn't do good, because right, I've done right. videos, you know, and it's a perfect example. I've done videos that cost you know fifty, forty thousand mm-hmm. for an independent artist, and it did shit. And then yeah. we did a video for two hundred bucks. Yeah, damn. And yeah. it, it, it overpassed yeah. like ten, twenty, yeah. and he got his money back. But it's like it's weird because like. You don't know until like maybe you drop the music and it does good, right? right? right. And I and I realized that a lot of these like you know artist managers mm-hmm. are like, well, we're gonna drop five five songs yeah. and see which one picks up and we'll shoot a music video to that, yeah, 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 yeah. or drop or spend five thousand dollars and shoot a bunch of little mini music videos for five videos mm-hmm. right, right. and see which one does the best and then yeah. we'll shoot a video for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? For sure. right. There's a right, lot right. of things that are figuring out that like instead of putting everything in one basket mm-hmm. like all the eggs in one basket, yeah. they're mm-hmm. kind of spreading it out and seeing what works the best. Mm-hmm. They mm. optimize that, yeah, yeah, and and I and I get it. It's Makes a sense. business. Yeah, business. It's a business. Yeah. Imagine spending a hundred thousand dollars on a video that mm-hmm. gets twenty thousand views. Yeah, and you're exactly. like, oh, well, does that? Yeah, the yeah, math ain't sure. math in that right, point. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're doing a bad job as yeah. a manager, or you're doing yeah. a bad job as a label, mm-hmm. spending that damn much yeah. money. Right, and right. I, it, you don't blame the artists. You don't blame the directors. Yeah. You, it, that's just the way people consume music or consume right, music videos, right? And that's really what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, another thing too is like. A lot of these upcoming, you know, videographers or uh, directors that are trying to get into the business, I think some of them find it feasible enough. But you know, you're definitely spinning advice. You're uh, mad at spinning advice. It's not really going to take you that far. It's not going to be like a income where you can, you know, rely on it. Yeah. Full time. Yeah. You know. Hundred so, percent. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, hopefully all you guys out there that are definitely upcoming, don't rely on it. Like, yeah. you know, do yeah. do something else as well. I'll say this. If music videos are not sustaining you and you're not, you're being broke half the year, mm-hmm. pick up the camera that you normally shoot with. It probably shoots photos. Mm-hmm. Right. Learn how to do photography. There you go. Right, if right, you right. can't do photography, figure it out. Facts. You right, have right. YouTube for that. There you go. Now, learn how to shoot and get good at it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take, it, it takes work, but it, yeah. you'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Not only can you only shoot music videos, you can shoot photos too. Yeah. And you can shoot small things like quinceañeras, you can shoot like mm-hmm. portraits, you can shoot headshots. Opening up your horizon to being able to get hired by anything else will make a big difference. Facts. If you don't know how to edit, Learn how to edit short term or big term or or short term or mm-hmm. or long term long term content. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, the more you learn, the more you are accessible to getting hired. Getting hired. Right, I right. think that's the biggest thing that I've Stress. learned. That when I was broke, was when I was just a director. Mm-hmm. When I was just a director, yeah, I was right. pissed that my producers were like, "Why can't you give me work? Why yeah, can't mm-hmm. I'm always bringing y'all work?" Mm-hmm. But I didn't mm-hmm. realize that not a lot of jobs are out there for directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But guess what? There's a lot of job out there for. Photographers, mm-hmm. editors, Facts. DPs, mm-hmm. and other mm-hmm. things that you can learn on the yeah. way of being a better director. Because right. the, the more you learn about photography and the more that you mm-hmm. learn about being a DP, the more you learn about editing, mm-hmm. it's going to help you as well, but it's also going to get you hired on other things. Because right. people are going to ask, who edits your videos? And you say yourself, I'm open up a gate to right. like, yo, you can edit my videos? I'm like, yeah, bro, 100%. Yeah. You know, and I've locked in like two, three month contracts to mm-hmm. edit 
TikTok videos. Yeah. Right, right, right. I've never been closed out on shooting vertical. I've never been closed out about shooting TikToks. Mm. I've never been closed out about anything because at right. the end of the day, if you can create art or create content and get paid for it, right. You're not that you, you should not be better than any of that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, would you rather be broke? Or working on some stuff that you might not even like, but it's still getting you paid. Right, right. right. Let's give yeah. a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. oh. <laughs> you can't hear it. It's, it's going through. Yeah, yeah. Like, that no, was that, like that, that was perfect. That shit was yeah. inspirational. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That shit was amazing and 100 percent facts. Like, yeah. don't be stubborn either. Don't be yeah. hard headed, bro. Because yeah. I was like that for a long time. I was like, nah, I'm only gonna be a director. Yeah. This and that. Because there's a certain sense of ego. Yeah. It's an I ego. Know. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get away from it. Exactly. The ego is making you broke. Yeah. yeah. And in reality, you don't want to be broke. Exactly. And you don't want to tell people you're broke because you have an ego. Exactly. Pe- t- take that pride aside, bro, and yeah. figure all these other things out. And I tell you right now, if you figure out mm-hmm. how to be a DP, how to camera operate, how to be the, you'll be a better director at the end because you'll learn how to tell people wh- how you want your shots to look, how mm-hmm. you want your lighting to look, how you want your camera to move, all these things that you're learning mm-hmm. by doing it yourself. When you tell people these stuff, mm-hmm. you'll be able to have the same language with them and have right. the conversation and be able to understand and they can understand you. Right, right. That's right. really what it is. Right. You'll learn it because I've learned that my directing has gotten better because I could translate the technical terms to mm-hmm. people that I have not worked with. Yeah. You know, and most of these people that are industry work off tech, technical terms. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So it, sure. it really does help. Yeah. You it know? Does sure. yeah. Hey, another Facts. run of the podcast. Yeah, hey, let's go. George Killen and I are here with that inspirational shit. <laughs> Come let's on. Let's go. Uh, you know, you've had the opportunity to work with a lot of well-known artists such as Kid Ink, MGK, Hobson, Dizzy Wright, Futuristic, Devon Terrell, Fora, and obviously your talented girlfriend and uh, previous guest here we had on the show, Christine the Queen. Yeah. Yes, Shout out to my baby. Hey, let's, let's go, go. Let's go. Uh, how does it feel to you know have such an amazing portfolio and be able to work with talent such as the people you know I I named? You named them all, right? Yeah. And honestly, I didn't. I never like. It, I was like, yo, I'm gonna get all these artists. And, yeah. You know, you guys named them all. I mm-hmm. sometimes I forget. Yeah. But it just happened along the career. I was never like. Mm. working with certain people and 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 it just it happens it Mm. just if you get good enough and you people hear about you and you work with someone and they're impressed you're gonna get passed along sounds weird but you get passed along but in a good way yeah um you're you're like i said your work will speak louder than you going out and talking to someone you meet someone at a at a 7-eleven or cvs yo i can shoot these videos but like instead of someone doing that someone like yo i shot with them who shot your video Mm -hmm. right Right, right. that's the best question yeah the best the best question someone can ask an artist who shot your video right right, Right? exactly sure but it helps but i think the whole idea of like having like a resume of the artists that i've worked with is really cool but Mm -hmm. It was never my intention to work with all these big artists. Yeah. It just yeah. happened because of my work. It mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, the it wasn't because I have this big name or whatever the case right, right. is. And the work was always in front of my name. And yeah. it's always been like that, you mm-hmm. know? Right, right, right. So. Has there ever been, like, um, now that you we've named all those people who, who you work with, has there, uh, is there, like, a bucket list of, like, people you want to work with? Yeah, 100%. Drake. Yeah. Drake? Okay. Yeah, 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 it's just, I've always been a fan of him. Like, I okay, used yeah. to listen, I, I I didn't even know he was on Degrassi, first of all. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was on Degrassi. Until I found he got him, big, yeah, so No, I, I just found him on MySpace. Oh, okay. And he was, his music was playing on MySpace, and yeah. I'm just like, yo, Drake is cool, da, da, yeah. And I found out he was on Degrassi because yeah. of his mm. music page. Yeah. His right. music page had nothing to do with Degrassi. Mm. He think he was separating himself at the point. Yeah. And um, it was really cool. But yeah, Drake. Drake is definitely like... I'm, I'm a such car. a die yeah. hardcore Drake yeah. fan. Yeah, no, same. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I used to watch Degrassi all the time, too. And, you know, I seen Drake. But I honestly, you know, when he became a musician, I yeah. was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. it came out of nowhere, pretty much. 100%. You mm-hmm. know? Um, I want to see, you know, can you give tips to other fellow uh, directors and videographers out there? Like, with your big resume, how can other people possibly work with like big name artists as well um i, I learned that uh going straight to the the head of the snake is really hard to get their attention like mm. say i wanted to work with i already worked with like, like mgk i worked with right mm. i didn't go straight to mgk mm. i went to their manager's friend mm. and kind of like found who was around him and like go and do something for them to mm. kind of get in that circle on yeah. that pocket mm. that's okay. smart yeah. and you know mingle with the manager yeah. and and figure out what you can do and mm. it can be something small or something big whatever right, you can right, do right. but it's figuring out how to 
kind of go around them and be around them, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, how do I get with certain people, right? Yeah, like, yeah. if like Drake lived in LA, I'll try to get his best friends to like, yeah, yeah. you know, shoot random shit For if sure, it was yeah, like yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. But that also takes like knowing how to shoot photos. Maybe you're a videographer or right. whatever. Learn how to do the other skills that Your can talent. help. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure they mm. won't want video. They would mm. want like photos. Yeah, For sure. So figuring out how to make those connections away from the artist that some at some point they see your face and then mm. they kind of see your face and then they, they end up asking who you are. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, man, just being able to kind of doing your homework and figuring out who's around that person. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. They yeah. all will need something sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, they all need really nice photos at some yeah, point. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. That's so, smart. That's, yeah. smart. That's dope. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, if you smart. go too direct, it almost seems try hard. If yeah. You like to go up to them, hey, then, you know? Not even yeah. that. There's like thousands of photographers are trying to go to right, an yeah. artist. Yeah. 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 And what makes you different? I mean, exactly. even just in general, like, it, especially if you try to reach out to them, like, yeah. it's not going to happen. S- super yeah, hard. you literally exactly. have to see him in person just yeah. to try to get a interaction And even from then, yeah. they're probably not going to give you the time yeah, of day. Yeah, facts, exactly. facts, facts. Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be kind of set up, yeah. yeah. You know, I want to go into, you know, your relationship with, you know, you and your girlfriend, Christine. Yeah. You know, you guys have this, like, Bonnie and Clyde duo. Yeah. And the chemistry is, like, off the charts, which makes sense because, you know, she's an artist mm-hmm. and you're a filmmaker. Yeah. You know, you guys done some amazing work together and really push each other to the next level. Yeah. How is it to have, like, a work-life uh, relationship together to not only push you um, as a creative, but also uh, as a better person off camera? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like yeah. my girl does music, and before her, like I really didn't know much about music. I've been around it, mm-hmm. but I never invested like to even paying attention to it. So mm-hmm. it was just really cool okay. just seeing her create and record music. I've been around it, but I never <laughs> really paid attention to it because it wasn't part of me. Yeah. But when you're in a relationship, it like mm-hmm. if it's something that you don't really care much about or never really paid attention to it you would want to pay attention to it so right, right. once she started recording music like i wanted to figure out how she did it and mm, like okay you know yeah for sure and she showed me a couple of crazy things like she only she only records music or, or writes music while she's mm. driving home from work yeah, okay, cases. Yeah. yeah but it's really cool just seeing her zone in mm. and like she has a certain like mama mentality when it comes down to her writing mm. like mm. when she's in the zone there's like there's no way to stop her like she's mm. gonna get a song done yeah. and she'll write like it's she's told me like you know like i got it done in 10 minutes i'm like how do you do it i don't know right. i just get into this like zone yeah and it's really cool because i get into that same zone in my yeah. own way yeah in your own way. so yeah. it's really cool yeah. it's it's the dopest thing ever and we can kind of like you know bond in a way with yeah. creative stuff when we're shooting videos we do it to ourselves so it's like a it's a very like like intimate thing but not yeah. you know just very intimate when we do it together because it's fun it's like yeah, we're, right, we're, right. we're shooting videos we're going to a different city to shoot a, shoot some photos or right, whatever right. the case mm-hmm. but we get to bond in, at the same time it's like yeah. I'm still spending my time with my favorite person yeah, yeah. but ha- creating something yeah. so it's like a it's killing like, two birds with one stone yeah, kind of it's thing. not like yeah, I'm yeah. going away from my person to go do something I'm like I'm yeah. going with my person yeah, to do exactly. it Facts. so it's really cool yeah, yeah. you yeah. know I, I remember asking Christine when she was on the show as well the same thing you know because I had mentioned you know me and my fiance she's a fashion designer mm-hmm. and stuff like that and you know when she needs photos or yeah. a video for some of the design she's done you know I'm always there for yeah. her and nice. I think just in general, when you're a creative and then your uh, significant other is a creative, it's just one of those things it where it yeah. helps a lot. It helps. You know, you're able to bond, you're yeah. able to um, uh, help each other yeah. uh, with specific things. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's dope. It's also, dope. It yeah. also helps like not feeling like you're taking time away from that. Yeah, you know? it's, sure. it's like I'm spending time with you. Exactly. But it's also a cool thing because I realized that like, and I didn't really notice this, but we have a man's view, like mm-hmm. point of view, right? Mm-hmm, right. Yeah my girl has a woman's point of view. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. I'm shooting other girls or I'm shooting yeah. like models from other shoots or whatever, she can actually help me find the better parts sure. of that or mm. she'll she'll tell me like, hey, right, this right. looks better yeah. because she has a woman's perspective. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Us men, it's very hard to get that. <laughs> Unless I've been shooting, you know, models and females for the yeah. for like ten to fifteen yeah. years, I'll right, gain right. it. Yeah. But right. having her when she can input her creativity, she has she's very creative too. Right, like right. there's times she'll give me ideas that I'll take. Right, like, right. These are dope, and I'm like I'm like imposter syndrome. <laughs> this is her stuff. Yeah, but it helps. It helps yeah. that she's also creative and she's learned to like tap into like creatively give me direction to yeah. help me even on sets right. she'll just come by me and like hey what if you do this i'm like oh yeah. this is really cool no mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, well, yeah i wouldn't yeah. have thought about it yeah. because she has a different perspective right, right. and it's always cool to like not be closed off with people's perspective mm-hmm. perspectives because yeah. it's really a gift 
when you can take it and, yeah, and, exactly. and help you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And create a better product. Yeah. I think that's the best thing. I think I've heard like some people that like don't want to hear anything from anybody else, but like if they can respectfully give you creative criticism yeah. or give you exactly. an idea, it's okay. Yeah, I think exactly. there's a certain line to it where yeah. if you could res- if you guys respect each other yeah. enough, it'll help. Yeah, yeah. you gotta that's, let go of that ego. Yeah. Yeah. Literally everything you mentioned is the same thing yeah. for me. You know, like I'll, whenever I go out to a photo shoot, I always bring my fiance with yeah. me, you know, and she's usually there to uh, kind of assist the model or, you know, fix her, her hair or yeah, whatever yeah. and stuff. And she'll give me tips as well. So I... Everything you literally yeah, mentioned, yeah. It, it's amazing. You know, yeah. it's literally yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome having just somebody there to kind of help you get the woman's perspective because yeah. after that, you're probably going to come out with something super fire that yeah. you didn't even think you would. Yeah, you 100%. guys both inspire me because I'm so single. <laughs> I hope to, you know, if you, get, if you any woman, yeah, artist, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> One dollar, you can have my man here. <laughs> oh, let's shit. go, let's go. <laughs> come on, I'm looking for somebody yeah. in the artist industry. Yeah, he yeah. Is, yeah. Let's, let's go, go let's, let's go. go, let's go. But, you know, aside from, like, shooting music videos, I want to dive deep into, like, you working with Canelo and Ryan Garcia yeah. because uh, that's big and you know yeah, how is big. was like that experience with working with some heavy hitters you, you know what it was uh, definitely surreal at the time and I think that there was a it was like a bigger picture to that because it wasn't mm-hmm. just oh I shot this big fighter Canelo mm-hmm. yeah. really Canelo is the one that like tripped me out because okay. Ryan is new and okay, he's I've, crazy, I've yeah. been around him before oh, and then okay, his okay. friends and like uh, so I've known so, him a little bit so when okay. we ran into each other it was like the third time we ran into okay, each other yeah. but with Canelo so um, my dad doesn't so the backstory behind this mm. my dad doesn't um ever take off work he's mm. he's a he's an immigrant he, he, he's an immigrant he became a citizen here he okay. works out in the fields and I remember be, being young and in high school the only time that he would take off work mm. was to watch Canelo fight. Damn. Damn. Yeah. So That's me crazy. having the opportunity to actually work with that man that my dad loved so much mm. was just like full circle. Yeah. Cause wow. we had some downtime and we're waiting for a couple of things. And I was able to actually, I was able to actually talk to him and just like let him know that like, you know, my dad is such a big fan of you and like, you know, he would never take days off and he works out in the fields and mm-hmm. or- picking oranges and stuff. And the only times he would like, ever take days off was when you would fight wow and he was like wow like because that's who he fights for he fights for these people that are like the unsung heroes that like take the risk and and minorities minorities minorities. and it's his people and he just told me like yo tell your dad you know salute and that like i really appreciate him like supporting me it was such a cool experience man and it was like full circle moment it was full circle and just it was very surreal. I was like, I was like, I didn't know it was happening till after right. the fact. You know, I called my dad right after, yeah, and I let him know, and he just told me that yo, he told you, he shouted you out, and this yeah. and that. But it was very cool. Canelo was such a cool, really cool dude, man, and yeah. he was who you expect him to be. You know, yeah. as a Latino and Mexican, and and he's also from the same cut. Uh, from the same area that my parents are from. Oh, dope. Yeah, okay. so they're, his parents are from the same area that my parents are from. Gotcha. Okay. Just seeing, like, him be the face of boxing and yeah. just, yeah. it was just, like, it was such a great experience, you know? Mm-hmm. I've up to my whole life. Yeah. yeah. And, like, meeting them, it was such a disappointment. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, like, okay, for yeah. him, it was completely different. It was yeah. everything. It was everything yeah. that yeah, I expected and more. Yeah. yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, that's dope. That is dope. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of going off of what you were talking about, your dad... Um, I found your two YouTube channels. You know, one is your personal and the other your production company. Yeah. I noticed uh, on your personal, you were uploading vlogs and one of them included, uh, you know, going to the fields with your dad, picking oranges. And, you know, that was a really dope vlog. You know, you got to see what your dad was experiencing and stuff like that. Um, But the last time you had uploaded a vlog was about three years ago. Yeah. It's a minute. So, you know, know. I I, want to know, like, can we see any vlog content coming soon? Are you more focused on... On uh, on Point Films YouTube channel. Um, so I haven't said this like out loud to anybody, but mm. I'll, I'll just say it here. So I'm hey. working. I already plotted everything out, but I'm working on the actual documentary with my mm. dad Fire. about oh, no. immigrant farm working. That's dope. Damn. And it's gonna be a little deeper than just a, a vlog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The vlog did really well. I think it has like yeah. almost twenty thousand yeah, views or something. Yeah, it's pretty it had a lot. Yeah, it, had a lot it was of, a good vlog. It was a really good vlog, yeah, it yeah, and it had a lot of really positive feedback, yeah, and right. a lot of people could relate to what my dad's going through. You know, right, at the time right, right. when we were at, when he was out picking, yeah. this was the day before Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they still work. Yeah. And um, I wanted basically, 
you know, capsulate, you know, create mm -hmm. a moment in his life to, you know, tell his story. Yeah, yeah. But also tell a lot of Mexican stories. Right, 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 right. That can relate to what he went through. Right. And I'm creating a documentary that I want to end up putting out. Yeah. And putting, like, you know, film mm -hmm. festivals and stuff like that. So okay, that's my that next project. Maybe vlogging will yeah. come back at some point. Yeah. I really loved it, you know. It was yeah, fun. the vlogs were yeah, fun. Yeah, 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 they were, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. fun. And then, yeah. you know, you got to know my family and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So you went to Thailand as well? Yeah, Thailand yeah, yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. But like, um, you know, I definitely want this documentary is another thing that I'll be doing, yeah. uh, replacing the vlogs with my parents. Yeah. yeah. At some point, I probably will vlog with yeah. them. But mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's that was, a good story. Yeah. yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah. It's a story that not a lot of people like know about, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. And the thing about it is like, we live in LA and other people live in certain parts of, you know, California yeah. or in different states. Mm-hmm that don't know about farm workers and they don't right. know about that stuff, yeah, right? Sure you know, in certain summers, like it gets really hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, last year it got too hot. Right, yeah. right, exactly. It was like making people faint and people don't understand that. Like you could barely stand it to go outside and get into your yeah. car. Yeah. It's that hot. Mm -hmm. You can imagine people out in the field in yeah, Bakersfield and yeah. Fresno and in yeah. Madera or in Visalia area. Yeah. Like We're spoiled compared to that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And it's hot out there, right, bro. Right. And it got to the point where like these farm workers were working at 10 at night mm -hmm. with yeah. lights on yeah. to pick these things because it was so hot. During yeah. the day, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's crazy to to uh, see this stuff, but I want to illustrate this in, in, a, in a film. Yeah. And this is my first step to do something that's away from music videos and yeah. commercials and, and, yeah. and these like, content ideas that I've been doing to create something that is mine yeah. yeah, that is something that I created with nobody that's backing me that everybody yeah. everything has to do with me right. and all creative decisions are made by me fire yeah. you know, you know I'm, I'm definitely excited to see yeah. it because you know you bring up such a good point like these people are out in the fields yeah. um, and you know they're also putting their life at risk for 100%. us yeah, exactly. like us they're picking like you know fruits vegetables yeah. and all that for us right. and they're still putting their life at risk you right. know and, for, we're, and we're buying this stuff at target for yeah. you know in a nice little air conditioning yeah, you know right, like exactly. location yeah, yeah, and yeah. you don't realize what went through yeah. to get that to there. Get and there, i don't think yeah. a lot of people realize that you know yeah, you definitely right. brought more attention to my eyes because yeah, i never yeah. thought about it that way yeah it's you hard know? and it's yeah. and it's a true and it's a true story man we don't and it's not your fault and it's mm. nobody's fault it's just that we weren't exposed to it yeah, right, i exactly. was mm. i'm trying to give you guys my perspective yeah. behind right, it you know right. what i'm yeah. saying i yeah. grew up with that yeah. and like in my city where i'm from you know fresno in the yeah, area right. like mm. it's all orchards yeah you know all like all like peak you know like pistachios and whatever you can think of it's all like farm, farm out there yeah, yeah. and yeah. a lot of you know mexicans and latinos live out there for that mm -hmm. reason that's where all the work is at right. undocumented or not right, right you know that is the easiest way to make money but mm -hmm. it's also the hardest way yeah. to make money yeah yeah so damn yeah do, uh, do you have a time frame of when this will drop so like sometime can... next year but it nice. won't be something that i'll drop on youtube it'll mm -hmm. be something where you have to attend like a film festival or something yeah. okay i want to do a festival run before it ever goes and away youtube mm. i, can see I, that. I cross my fingers that it will get picked up somehow yeah. like yeah like i Netflix wanted to get yes that's really what what my goal is mm -hmm. is to get some attention in the film festivals yeah. because yeah. it's a real story yeah. Yeah. you know and I, I pray to God that like it works out how I, I yeah. see it in my head like I'm talking about like it's not just gonna be a documentary it's gonna right. have beautiful pieces of my dad like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. very like yeah. experimental shots that right, like right a beautiful Mexican man yeah. will, right, right. you'll see in a different light. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, um, you know, I want it to get attention to the point where it does get picked up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it does, bro, because yeah. I would definitely love to see it as yeah. well. And, you know, I don't think there's really any kind of documentary out there that's like this, you know, yeah. showing the life of somebody that, you know, is out there picking fruits and vegetables yeah. and mm. stuff like this. And then you're showcasing your dad. Yeah. Mm. That's dope. Yeah, you that's know, dope. So I, I could definitely yeah. see it being, you know, getting some rewards at least yeah, you know yeah, but that's what i really that's what yeah. i really want man yeah. so i think it's cool and i think i see a lot of people that i know that are you know getting their documentaries yeah. into mm -hmm. film festivals yeah. and it inspires me bro oh yeah when i see that stuff like that it's like my my boy the, that i know his name is a master sterling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. he has a, a documentary out right now called the merman okay and it's it's like tidal wave tsunami just going through every single film festival mm -hmm. getting selected yeah and it's so inspiring, man, because yeah. I've known him for the longest and I know he struggled and I helped him get his first big gig to kind of mm. get into the scene. And okay. he just picked up and he kept yeah. going and he found his lane. Yeah. And um, 
just seeing him like if he can do it i know i can do my part and figure yeah, out facts. my way too because i've always been exactly. wanting to do a documentary yeah. mm. and i've been doing stuff for other people and right, I, right. I kind of figured out the the format it's right, figuring right. out formats exactly. it's really yeah, yeah, anything yeah, else that i've learned to that, that i can do it myself too yeah. nothing's ever impossible right, it's exactly. just being able to do your homework yeah. for it right hey so, praying for you bro i know I you're gonna it. do it you're talented uh we're gonna see this on Netflix. Yeah, and for we're sure. gonna see this yeah. on Netflix. Or on Hulu. Yeah. For sure, for or sure. Hey, or something. Or Hulu. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Me and my girl are Hulu type of people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hulu. Hey. Hey, Hulu's dope too. I got Hulu too. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. not yeah. hating, not Hulu's hating. Hulu's gonna come up for yeah. sure. Yeah, I don't understand. Yo, yeah. Netflix, y'all gotta figure it out. $20 for a subscription? Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. about that. It, it is expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is expensive. But aside from all your creative work, you know, um, if you didn't pursue being a filmmaker, what career path would you? would you have taken i know you mentioned you're a gamer i noticed you collect cars maybe a professional card collector <laughs> um what avenue would you take um if you didn't do film i'd probably be creating clothing clothing okay. yeah because i one of my first one of my first first jobs was actually at a print shop okay okay and i fell in love with like just creating like stickers mm -hmm. and vectorizing stuff uh -huh. and and then at some point I was doing my own merch for my for the on point film stuff. Oh, okay, dope. And I figured out how to do stitching, and I figured out how to oh, okay, create, create embroidery and stuff like yeah. that. So if I've always had like a like an itch for like creating products as well. So mm -hmm. like doing screen printing and stuff like that. My boy uh, Chuchin, he's he showed me how to do that stuff. He has his own he has his own warehouse. Oh, okay. He dope. actually runs uh, one of the biggest warehouses in L. A. Oh, dope. Yeah, he nice. does like a bunch crazy. of crazy stuff, mm -hmm. and he, I have his warehouse and disposable if I ever need really? to use it. Yeah, dope. Mm -hmm. dope. But um, yeah, I think it was like the it's still creativeness. Yeah, it's still a creative lane. Well, of course, of course. But creating clothing was another thing that I for a while I was like there was an itch to it, man. I was making damn. money mm -hmm. at some point through like Etsy, oh, creating damn. stuff. Okay, like, but it was that would have been like if I just like skunked yeah. filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Clothing would have been. Sure. I would be caked up yeah, in clothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, That's for dope. sure. That's dope. That is yeah. dope. Yeah. Uh, you know, you kind of brought it up a little bit, but talking about on point films. Yeah. I want to get into the whole idea of starting a production company. Like, at what point did you think about starting? on point and was it like a hard process um it was and it wasn't in the beginning i just created on point films just created mm. it but right. nothing behind it it was just like this facade it was just the name of it and yeah it, it created a, i created a brand and mm -hmm. my name was right under it and right. i always believe that if you create a brand or if you build it people will come mm -hmm. right and i just started putting stuff under that name under on point films on point films and people just figured out that's where the brand's at yeah mm. and um yeah man it was it was hard in the beginning my sister helped me create the llc and you know people don't understand that like be on your taxes having an llc right, right, will help right. a lot because at the end of the day it's, this is taxes for dummies you don't have to pay taxes if you spend money on your equipment mm -hmm. right, and write it out. Yeah, right, exactly. It's really what it is. That's yeah. why I buy a lot of equipment all mm -hmm. the damn time because yeah. at the end of the day, it's either I'm going to pay the taxes or I could just write off stuff. Facts. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, I mean, if you really want to create a business, I think it's like $200. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 200 yeah. bucks and some and some trips to the offices to make this happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. facts. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, for me and him, you know, we had always talked about like, try to start a production company and stuff like that. But I also feel it's like super hard to find people to work with. You know, there's some people that are, uh, they either flake, they show up super late to shoots and stuff like that. Have you ex ever experienced like finding crew members that just don't work perfectly or maybe, um, or any kind of struggles that you have owning the company? Um, as a certain point, like I had to buy my own equipment because mm -hmm. of the flakiness behind it. Yeah. It uh, became an issue. Like, I didn't have a camera. I had to always ask for one. And then I got a big mm -hmm. gig, and I was like, yo, I hit my boy up. And I was like, yo, I really need you to come out and shoot this video for me. And he just got a job. Mm -hmm. right. So I was like, yo, I don't know if I can make it. Like, I'll let you know. I know he said he was, gonna, he was good. And then mm -hmm. he got a job, and he was like, yo, I'm really tired. Yeah. He, called me, he called me the night before, and he was like, yo, I, I can't make the shoot. I'm sorry, bro. And he never responded back to me. Yeah. I was like, I was asked out with no camera. It was like a red, yeah. too. Damn. And uh, yeah. yeah, and at that point, at, literally when that happened, I was like, I'm buying a camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it sucks when like you have to rely on people, right, but right. at the same time, I, I got to the point where I just bought all my equipment, mm -hmm. where I don't have to rely on people. Yeah. You just show up and you use my tools, mm -hmm. right, right. not the oh, other okay. way around. Yeah, you don't exactly. show yeah, up yeah, and yeah. we use your tools for the shit. Yeah. yeah, it's the other way around mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, and I'm not being cocky or anything like that. It's just right. the reality behind it is like, bro, like it's hard to find really good people that can work with you. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, and I tell people like, 
people that stick around with me are because they're really good and they, they're with the shits. Mm-hmm. Right, That's right, really right. what it is. Facts. So, so yeah, man, it's it's hard to find people that are reliable mm-hmm. and that are good yeah. right, and exactly. they're down to, down for it. You know, yeah, and it's really sure. hard. My boy yeah. AJ, he just moved to Vegas. Mm. He was my my go to guy. Oh yeah. really, damn. And it sucks because he moved moved to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. But you know, he's he's creating his life out there. But definitely, it's been hard. You know, to find a replacement for him. But yeah. that's my boy, man. I, yeah. I'm proud of him. He's having a baby soon. So hey, hey, let's no. go, Daddy Gang. So. Yeah, Daddy Gang, Daddy yeah. Gang. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, one thing you know that we always talk about is like you know pursuing the arts is very difficult. You know, financially, yeah. mentally, physically, you have to really have a strong head on your shoulders to really push through. You know, what are some like life changing moments for you that you had to like navigate through life to like overcome? and to be the person you are today. Yeah. Um, so when I was in film school, my financial aid money was running out to the end of the year, the end of my school being mm-hmm. there. I actually went to AI, by the way. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, okay. Santa Monica. Oh, in oh. Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So gotcha. when I was going to film school, uh-huh. my financial aid money was like running out. So that okay. means I had to get out of school housing. Mm-hmm. So I actually slept out of my car for the first three months, for the like the, the first three months of being out of housing Damn. to find my apartment because I couldn't afford to spend two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars for an apartment. Yeah, and uh, I was sleeping out of my car uh, for three months trying to find my apartment, and then I got scammed one time for uh, an apartment. Like, yeah, just send us our money, and then we'll, we'll check, show you the place, and you can move in there the next day. Mm. I got scammed. Damn. So I was like, you know, my routine was like, the gym was like right across the street from the Art Institute. Mm-hmm. So I would work all night, and they close like around three or four. Yeah. Then I would go to the gym, work out, play basketball till like five or six, yeah. go to sleep in the car, wake Damn. up, and go right back to school. Damn. Damn, that's hard. It was hard. At some point, I was like, man, I don't know how to do this. And thank God I was mm. by myself. I wasn't, Nobody was around me. I didn't have a dog. Yeah, yeah. It was just me. And yeah. I could I could withhold and withstand what was going on. But it was definitely a mental toll. Yeah. Wake up. And then I it, it, it was three long months because in the beginning, it was yeah. really hot when I would get in the car. Then it, it, later on, in the, the last couple months, it was really cold. Mm-hmm. Weather changed. Yeah, right, right. So it got bad. I had to turn the car on at night and just sleep in the car. And, like, I, you know, security guys would wake me up. Like, yeah. yo, you can't really be sleeping in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. But it was tough, man. But. I'll say this, uh, people that were like in the same film school as me and, and mm-hmm. all that, they're no different between me and them. Like the only right. reason that I'm where I am where I am now mm-hmm. is because I did not give up. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And I didn't exactly. stop. Facts. And I didn't mm-hmm. let any adversity stop me yeah. and, and block me from what I wanted to do. Facts. Yeah. You know? Damn, that's Damn, crazy. That's crazy. Uh, did your parents know I did about no. this at all? Hell no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because, yeah. you know, no. we, our, our friend yeah, Donovan, know. Uh, you know, he he – came on the show as well and he talked about his life and he was homeless for six months yeah uh he mm-hmm. went he's a chiropractor yeah um you know, parent gonna want to know that your kids yeah, see, on the street. That's the exactly. thing. yeah he never told his parents yeah. either and um you know damn it it's hard it, it's a struggle especially when you yeah. have to go through that yeah you know damn. but guess what doing all that stuff it like told you that like well, life can't get any worse than this exactly. i've seen other people that like were going to ucla or mm-hmm. usc and I was at a Starbucks and she was homeless, homeless. Mm-hmm. And she was doing her homework. Yeah. It was like an old, older lady. She was doing her homework at Starbucks. Yeah. And she was homeless. She had yeah. everything in her bag and her suitcase. And like she had like a, uh, a sleeping bag all mm-hmm. together. And she'd like let us know that she was going to UCLA. Damn, that's mm. crazy. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want it, someone else next to you will want more than mm-hmm. you. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you don't want to put that extra day of work, someone else next to you is going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna take a day off. There's someone in this world that's gonna outwork you. Yeah, for remember sure. that. For sure. I always tell people like, yo, if you're not gonna work hard, someone else is gonna take your place. Yeah, yeah for sure. Nobody's, everybody's replaceable, facts. and no matter how good you are. Facts. No, that's facts. Until well, that, that day that you decide to like take the, you know, your foot off the gas is the day that someone's gonna end up gassing you off. Oh yeah, no, that's facts. Is the facts. realest, you know. Mm-hmm. So after being homeless and like going to college you know when was that like big turning point where you want you knew you wanted to do like film full time shit i was at film school the <laughs> yeah. the world. i mean yeah, i okay. just realized that like i i'm that type of person that like when i set my mind to like something that i want to do i'm gonna do mm-hmm. it full speed and i don't okay. care like you know yeah and i was like yo I'm, i have to make this happen yeah mm-hmm. i think i was working at best Buy and i quit with mm-hmm. no notice i was like i'm never coming back mm-hmm. Damn. because i want to f- pursue film yeah. 100% yeah, for sure. and this was in 2011 I never had a regular 
quote unquote mm-hmm. regular yeah. job yeah. ever again. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was broke like five years into it, but it was just I'm gonna figure this out. Sure. I'm gonna yeah. figure this out. Yeah. I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. That was just my my mindset. Yeah. Perseverance. One more day, one more day, one uh, more day, one day more day. day. Uh, and it's that that saying is like, yo, like you know, the people that like want to break a habit or like are breaking a habit it's like just just try for one more day yeah. mm-hmm. just try for one more day. the next day try for one more day mm-hmm. it's not giving up and just yeah. keep pushing yeah. just keep chiseling and I, yeah. I always remember that one meme where like it shows the the you know that big pot of gold and then the ones digging and it's right there one more chisel and you'll be passing see all mm-hmm. the gold yeah and there's the other one under him just chiseling away with mm-hmm. so much motivation that one strike will get you through the gold right, but right. you decided to stop at that one strike Right, right. You hey, let's give you a round of applause for that. That's fine. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's never fine. heard that before. So that's it's like that. it's the guy literally walking away from the for that one strike. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I give up now. Yeah. And right. then there's one person motivated, like four strikes away, just motivated, man. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. dope, bro. Uh, you know, we are coming to the end of our our podcast, and you know, we created Artistry Drop to be inspirational to the next generation. Uh, so what advice can you give to our viewers out here listening that want to become a future director or videographer? Don't give up. And I know that sounds so cliche, but like mm-hmm. the reality of it is like you're going to face so many no's and so many setbacks and so much like time wasted. Mm-hmm. And it will happen. It happens to everybody. It just, you're not accepted from it. It's just going to happen. It's right. just part of life. And we've all gotten the no's and we've all gotten the wasted money and equipment broken, stolen and this and that. But it's like if you really want something and, and it doesn't matter if it's film or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm you can get through it and Mm -hmm. i and and i know it sounds crazy but like if you feel that you have the potential Mm -hmm. and you have the work ethic Mm -hmm. you'll get past it the ten thousand hours is just the beginning it's just to get you to show you the work yeah it's another set of ten thousand hours that's going to get you to the next level Mm -hmm. you know kobe was talking about it saying that like it's crazy to you have to have that mindset that you go in and you work 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 one day and get nothing out of it mm-hmm. to getting up the same the next day and doing the same damn thing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just going at it again the same way the same mindset because it doesn't happen overnight right, mm-hmm. exactly. that shit doesn't happen overnight yeah. right, and you right. know when they say like oh that breakthrough mm-hmm. it's that damn feeling that you don't know if you're gonna break through if it's gonna be glass or if it's gonna be concrete right. but the idea of ba- just running through the wall 100 miles per hour yeah. is being able to break through whatever Ever your fears in front of it. Mm-hmm. Right, it's right. crazy because the, when you when people say, "Oh, what was your biggest breakthrough?" My breakthrough was when I stopped fearing what I could I could really like create and mm. be who I am. You know, yeah. that's yeah. really what it is. It's like, dude, like there's so many people that like quit that I've seen that are so talented, but they realize that like it's not for them. But it's mm. like, no, it's not. It's not that it's not for you. Yeah. It's that you gotta get into a zone where like nothing else matters. Right, right, right. These greats, these people that are like great athletes that I, I that's where my examples come from and that's mm. where my work ethic comes from. Is like these greats like see this tunnel mm. and there's nothing around. You know, and Kobe shooting the, the free throw shot when his, you know, his freaking finger is broken and he's in his in his in his sweats and he's just mm. shooting when nobody's around. Those things that nobody sees is what's going to give you light later on on the road when right, right. everybody's seeing yeah. because right, you exactly. made those shots and you made you were in practice when nobody was around. Right. That's the really the hardest part mm. is putting in the work and not giving up. Right. It really is. Yeah, bro. That's Damn, fucking that's inspirational. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, give another round of applause. That's fucking inspirational right there. That was bro. heavy. Hey, yeah, that, that was heavy. Go. That was heavy. Yeah, uh, are there any shout outs or anything you'd like to say or, to our viewers? Man, shout out to y'all. Yeah. And um Appreciate shout out to my soldier. baby girl, Christine the Queen. For sure. Um, Christine the Queen. Sure. And I wanna I really want to shout out to God. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, if it wasn't for him, like yeah. I wouldn't be where I'm at. For sure. Yeah. A lot of things that you know we don't realize it's like God does things and puts you in certain positions in life that it's just it is what it is and yeah. you got to deal with it yeah you know sure. and the perfect example is like for me god had a plan like mm-hmm. i just got hurt like a couple months back mm-hmm. but i got a job a month or two b- before i got hurt mm-hmm. to be at home working remote yeah yeah to edit for a company yeah. for right. four or five months mm-hmm. and i got hurt where i couldn't work for four or five months unless i was at home mm-hmm. yeah god somehow knew that that was going to happen right. and I was able to go through the trials and tribulations mm. and I was able to get through it Fire. and you know always believe that you know there's a higher power and so mm-hmm. I want to shout out to my boy RJ hey let's go hey. uh, uh, JR he's uh, my pastor at a 
Burbank, um, and he dope. helps out with like keeping my faith and knowing that everything's gonna be all right. Yeah, mm-hmm. so dope. that's dope. Hey, Yay. let's go. Uh, where on social media can our viewers find you? At at George Roscoe, George mm-hmm. un, George underscore Roscoe, Roscoe on Instagram, right. yeah. and I don't have a. I don't have Twitter anymore, so just <laughs> on point films and George yeah, Roscoe yeah. on Instagram. So yeah, yeah, and of go. course, guys, we are gonna drop all his uh, social media in the description box below. But George, yes. thank you so much again for coming appreciate through to the bro. podcast, bro. You Always, speak yes. fucking inspirational shit tonight. Hell so yeah. we appreciate it. We is definitely appreciate it. I appreciate it. You yeah. definitely inspired me tonight as well. So of course, thank yeah, you man. once again. Uh, but guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, it's Artistry Drop. If you're not following us on Instagram, you can find us at the Artistry drop and if you prefer just listening you can stream all our episodes on all major podcast platforms and we'll see you guys on the next one another one Peace. peace peace